Good morning from Japan's second snowiest city. And that is extremely important because today we are doing something that Brie has wanted to do since the third grade and she has not stopped talking to me about this since I have met her. So what better idea for Valentine's Day while we're traveling the world than crossing this off of her bucket list. We're going dog sledding. We are up bright and early today because it's a long travel day. From here in Sapporo, we have to take a train from the JR station after a one mile walk to said station, and then two buses to get there. Overall, our journey time is gonna be something like three hours and 45 minutes one way. So that means we're roughly looking at seven and a half hours of total travel time today for about two hours. That being said, I think it's gonna be well worth it. What's the temperature looking like today, Brie? It is 16 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you have the appropriate clothing for such weather? <laughs> we are getting closer and closer. Uh, I think we have maybe a 30 to 40 minutes left on this bus. We are so excited. I don't think we could have gotten better weather. It is completely clear. It is so sunny and the snow just looks perfectly freshly fallen. We cannot wait. So we just got picked up uh, by our host and taking shoes, driving us onto the kennel and we could not be more pumped to set a bunch of fresh snow felt today so the conditions are perfect. We have arrived. So we just swapped out of our gear into some awesome loan gear that Takeshi provided for us. <laughs> this is our amazing guy Takeshi, and we're about to go dog sledding. I'm Yay, so excited. Can't wait. Oh, I... Gosh, are they excited? They are <laughs> uh, they're waiting for you. I think Bree's in her happy place. I am ready. Look at all of them. Hi. Wanna be on wanna be on YouTube? Tall. Oh. Bye Nina. Oh my god. This is our snow dog team today. Our team was comprised of eight dogs total. The two dogs closest to the sled are known as the wheel dogs. The wheel dogs have to be the most powerful in the group. In front of them comes the team dogs, which are just for adding extra power for a faster pace. Then the swing dogs, which help to turn the team. Finally, the lead dogs, which help steer the team and set the pace. Takeshi actually has a total of 40 dogs that he rotates through at any given time, and they are actually all descendants from the first couple that he owned a couple years ago. And our favorite girl, Nina. <laughs> oh my god! Let me explain oh, how to drive dog sled, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. Two people can ride, okay? Uh, do you have experience of ski or snowboarding? I can snowboard and... Mm -hmm. No. Never? <laughs> I, don't, I skied <laughs> once, so I'm once, not good yeah. at it. <laughs> okay, one is stand on the ski and hold the handle. Okay. Okay? One is sit here, like this. We are on our way. Doing a great job. <laughs> <Josh>. <laughs> 
My face is freezing. <laughs> this is much scarier than it looks, I promise you. <laughs> She was telling us that sometimes when they're running the dogs suddenly have to poop and you'll be able to see it by how they squat down so when they do that you just have to slow down and let them do their thing because they can do it while they run slowly or walk so we just had our first experience he even said that sometimes if you don't slow down and you don't notice it the poop will just come flying back at you so pay attention <laughs> Uh, this is a halfway point. Wow. Uh, we run six kilometers. Wow. Six kilometers. Uh, I want to make them uh, some rest. Yeah, yeah. He gives them breaks about every three kilometers because apparently they warm up really quickly and that's why they don't use actual Siberian Huskies because they get warm way too quickly. So they use the short fur Huskies, which is much better for them. But you can tell that these guys just would live to work all day, every day. They get so excited to get going. Getting a break. You can tell that you really love the dogs, you know? Yeah, it's amazing. I never uh, forced them to running, the using like uh, using a whip and yeah. like, scold yeah. them. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. They really love to run. Office is cute. Uh, they don't want to stop. <laughs> yeah, I can tell they want to go. Yeah. It's now my turn to drive. So taking over, stepping on the brake. Jeff's our new filming crew. Are you ready? Whoa! <laughs> that will never not be scary. <laughs> Are you ready for a turn? No. Push your what brain. do I do? Do I turn into it? Lean to the left. Wait, to the left? Yeah, lean to the left. There you go. Look at that. So I think one of the things that's making this really beautiful is that there's no one else here. I mean, we're not like at some big commercial place where a bunch of teams are going. It's literally just this one guy. He does two tours a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And now we're going through the woods and it is beautifully silent, except for us, Sound of the Sleigh and the dogs. So we just wrapped up. If you can believe it, our GoPro actually froze. So it wouldn't work for the remainder of our journey, but all in all, Jeff and I each had two times that we could ride the main mushing point on the sled. We went a total of 12 kilometers and the dogs were absolutely loving it. This is probably one of the highlights of the road trip so far. It was absolutely incredible. So now we have a quick three and a half hour journey back to Sapporo. Just something to note, as we're heading back, the evening tour is probably getting started and the temperature has dropped significantly. Oh, thank God. We made it back to the hotel room and we just got some dinner in the train station. We've been getting this really amazing dish called tankatsu, which is basically deep fried pork cutlet and they serve it with rice and miso and it is just mm, one of the best things that we've had here so far. Speaking of good things we've had here so far, Jeff is stuffing his face with mochi strawberry mochi and it's delicious oh it's mostly gone glad he saved me some um but today <laughs> she, she ate hers already 
Today was absolutely amazing though. If anybody out there is watching this video trying to figure out if you want to come and do dog sledding here in Hokkaido, my advice would be absolutely do it. It was very worth it. I do have one thing to add. So the price for this adventure for us was 460,000 yen. That's for both of us for the, I think there are two options, a shorter and a longer trek. We did the 12 kilometer little loop with the dogs and I think you can do the smaller one, it's a little bit cheaper. Know that this does not include transportation to and from Sapporo and it's not a direct train. You take a train to Shintoku and then from there we had to take two buses to get there which did save us actually quite a bit of money. The bus rides ended up being about 1,040 yen each and on the way back there are no buses at that time. We would have had to have taken a taxi which would have cost us about 90 US dollars. So just something to be aware of. That being said, I have to just say how incredible this guy was. He gave us a 10,000 yen vouch that the government was giving out to help boost tourism and he gave it to us to cover the cost of our taxi. So we actually didn't pay anything on the way back and it was just so incredibly kind. I tried to refuse it at first just because it, it seems so over the top. Um, but it just goes to show that this place is run by a really great human being and we'd love to send some business. So if you're here, please, please, please go use Mushing Works. And if you're worried about the language barrier, don't worry about it. The guy that we went with speaks perfect fluent English and he is super amazing and easy to get to know and he just genuinely loves what he does. Did you want to add anything to that? No, I think you said everything <laughs> perfectly with no retakes whatsoever. So I think we just cut it right there.